So this is an Audio Lab 8000A um, British built amplifier. It had a good reputation in the 80s, well, late 80s and 90s for good sound quality. Um, quite a capable power supply, quite a big power supply. They were rated about 50 to 60 watts RMS per channel. Um, yeah, won lots of rave reviews. I bought this one as a uh, spares or a pair. Um, got it here and I was expecting it to maybe all be in one piece, but no, no screws to haul any covers on. Everything was floating around. The knobs just went round and round in circles. The volume control was knob was loose. The spline on the um, shaft of the pot was uh, squashed in, so the pot was just whizzing round on the end of the shaft. Uh, fixed most of that. Um, it was sold as uh, spares and repairs, um, only working on one channel. Um, I think the main reason was the input selector wasn't working, but however, the right hand channel is um, distorted. Um, you can hear that. Not so easy to hear with the microphone on this, I know the microphone's not great. Very distorted sound. Um, and it sounds like the classic problem where a driver transistor is gone and not biasing the output transistor. So what I'm expecting to... Well, I'm going to have a quick look. You can see there's been some damage here before. This is fairly common with these um, amplifiers. And you can see here this discoloration. Um, these resistors they use in these are uh, working at their beam end all the time. They, you know, they're probably quarter watt resistors and they've probably got quarter watts going through them all the time. It's obviously to save money. But um, it does mean that they do run, you know, hot all the time. I've also noticed this is this regulator here, um, and I think that regulates the supply for the phone and stuff. That is actually very hot as well, so I might need to look into that. Um, but at the moment, it looks like I it's probably going to be a problem with the um, output stage biasing. So I think the first thing we'll do is we'll just do a couple of static checks with the uh, multimeter. So I'll turn it off and... Hopefully it will discharge itself fairly quickly, so we don't get spurious readings with the with the multimeter. Um, I don't know if uh, audio. It's difficult to find any decent information on these amplifiers. Audio Lab are a bit bit sort of secretive about their uh, designs, but I'm just wondering if uh, any of these are fusible resistors that are maybe fused and someone hasn't replaced. Um, so that what I'll do is I'll, I'll, I'm pretty confident the output stage is uh, intact. These transistors are extremely rugged. It would take a hell of a lot to blow one of these up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, first of all find some glasses so I can actually see what I'm doing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the uh, right hand channel. So first of all I need to really I suppose make sure I know which channel is which. But I think I'll assume for the time being that these this is the right hand channel. So these little transistors here. Just gonna see if we can buzz these out. Looks like try and work out which is the base and it looks like this end connection here's the base. Get any response from this transistor. Junction there. Okay, so we. Okay, so base is the center. That transistor is okay. Um, let's try. Not so easy to get to this one. This is a PM. Like an MPN, the other one's a PMP, that one's... Yep, transistor's okay. Difficult to get the connection on these because the legs don't stick out very far. Okay, so those three transistors look fine. What I will do is at some point just scrape out all this black burning where this these resistors have damaged the board because that 
not only does it look bad, is that it is actually conductive as well, obviously, because it's carbon, so I need to sort all that out. So they're the, um, looks like the drivers there. Let's have a look at these transistors here. That looks right. Yep. Okay. Okay, they, they look all right. It looks okay. Just it's just a case of working back through all the transistors, checking each one, making sure every single one's okay. The rest of these are MPN, as you can see. PMP. And the PMP. Okay, what's going on here? Conduction, it's just not just not activating the bleeper here. Yeah, so we've got diajunct two diajunctions there. That one's all right. It's me shorting something out. That's okay. I don't remember going over any of these twice. I hope not. It's easy to lose track when you've got so many transistors. So these transistors all look okay, and this is the sort of area of the circuit I'm more worried about. So the next I'll do is I'll check some of these resistors. These are 4.7 ohm here. That's okay. Let's check some of these. We've got a, a sort of brown, black. Is that a, is that a purple? Brown. What's that measuring? 98 ohms. Oh, it's a brown, black, brown maybe. So if we check at these ones here. So that's a fifty one and a half K, that's a hundred K here. These don't actually look like fusible resistors. Hundred hundred M's there, two two that's a twenty two K. That's about right. Uh so brown, purple, red, so, so it's a one seventy it's a one point seven K. One point eight, so maybe it's a grey. Looks like another one point eight K here. That looks okay. Um and behind here we've got a 22k, yep, that's good. A couple of diodes, check these diodes and the diode checker. Diodes okay. Okay, that diode looks right. And that diode looks okay. So it looks to me, initially, like uh, all the semiconductors are okay. Let's just have a look under the bottom of the board and see what it looks like where this rework's been done. So we've had some pretty poorly soldered joints put back in here. Um, maybe the next thing to do is investigate that because if that hasn't been soldered properly, that's part of the biasing circuit. And we could have some problems there. So this is, the, this is where all the damage has been done. And you can see the way it damaged the board. Need to really know where all these tracks go. Um, see that track looks like it goes to there. That track looks like it continues to there. There's copper there. So let's just buzz these out. Make sure these are good. That's 
good there. Looks good to there. And you see this resist no this transistor here doesn't seem to be going anywhere. So we need what we will probably have to do is try and find a layer a schematic or a, a layer out of the board and work out where that transistor goes because that board's open there and it's obviously not going to conduct anywhere. So for the time being what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and tidy up some of these joints and, and clean up some of this burning. Obviously the tracks are making good contact here but we need to clean all this mess up first so we can actually see what's going on. So. It looks initially like it's possibly just due to poor sort of rework and uh, working out where the board track goes. But uh, let's, give the, let's have a look at this. I'll, uh, I'll try and find a circuit layout and uh, we'll get back to this. Thanks for watching.